Ryan Garcia making his way in. The flash, you know the hand speed. You know the smile, you know the power. This kid is a superstar. And Ryan Garcia continue his rapid ascent. Oh, the sends the kid down. Now we're going to see what this kid's made. I just want to prove to the world that I'm not here in boxing for a short time. I'm here for a long time. Fight! It's official. Ryan Garcia is set to return. He will face Emmanuel Tago on April 9th. I'm not scared of nobody. Let's bring it. Live from the Alamo Dome in San Antonio, Texas. How you doing, everybody, wherever you may be watching? And if you're over there in the fan, make some noise if you want to make some. All right, we'll come back to you. You can do better than that right here. It's the final press conference. We get ready for Ryan Garcia's return on Saturday, exclusively on DAZN. I'm your host, Bethel Duran. your online sportsbook experts. The fight will place, take place on Saturday, April 9th, right here inside the Alamo Dome, and will be streamed live exclusively on DAZN Worldwide. Tickets are still available at Ticketmaster.com. So, fans, you ready? All right, we'll get back to you. I, I, right now we're good, because, you know, they're not excited about Bethel Duran, but when Ryan shows up, woo, right? Exactly. We'll see. We'll, we'll come back and monitor that. So make sure you guys behind the scenes, the Golden Boy social media crowd. Let's get the, the cheers for Bethel. Cheers for Ryan. Ah, exactly. There you go. All right, so we're going to have some fun with this. But right now, uh, on Saturday, there's going to be a cool setup right here inside the Alamo Dome. Been some great fights over the years inside this beautiful building. And also, you're going to see some history being made on Saturday. Four fights on the zone. And before we get to Ryan and Tago, we're going to bring up, uh, I mean, they're having a great conversation on the side. You can probably hear him. Bernard Hopkins. You know, when Bernard Hopkins is around, you know you're going to hear him. Right, B-Hop? All right. <laughs> All right, let's get started. So if uh, anybody wants to tell Bernard Hopkins that he should be coming to the stage right now. <laughs> all right, join me on stage. All right, we're going to try this together, right? Join me on stage, Bernard Hopkins. All right, well, all right, all right. one more time, Bernard Hopkins. <laughs> I love it, B-Hop. I've been seeing you back there for the last 10 minutes just chopping it up and uh, talking to everybody over yes. and over and over. See some old friends back there, but look, um, glad to be here. In San Antonio, uh, also glad to see uh, Ryan come and uh, make his, I'm going to say, debut on a, on a high level. And this is very exciting. And I think that uh, bigger, better, bigger, better things is coming for a lot of fighters, but especially Ryan. Yeah, so Bernard, see that how he gave us the professional voice? I love B-Hop because he gave you the professional voice there. But before the mic showed up, you were back there. You were throwing punches at people. I saw you. I, I was doing a little shadow boxing. See? <laughs> It, it's, let me tell you something, it never it's, been over, you. it's been over 40 years, at a 47 year old, young, I, I feel like every now and then, when you're around young fighters, they ask you questions, you have to be honest with them and give them um, encouragement to go forward, also to never get comfortable. It's okay to be pleased, but not comfortable. In this sport, to be comfortable is a defeat happening it's ready to happen. Yeah. It just went. And yeah. so I just try to get some knowledge as we go through, like my partner, Oscar De La Hoya, and other fighters that, that, you know, other fighters that, you know, ex-fighters that's here now, they do the same thing. But uh, that's something that I'm, I'm accustomed to doing. And I'm yeah, you, every continue. now and then I see you and be, you just stand there and it's like a quick little, not, not that I know what pa I'm doing. Pass the knowledge. <laughs> yeah, pass the knowledge. You know, that's, that's key. And a man full of knowledge, the editor-in-chief of Ring Magazine, he's bringing him to the stage right now, Doug Fisher. Come on, Doug. 
Bring that beautiful belt. And the reason we're bringing them up right now, because on Saturday, for the first time ever, the Ring Magazine belt that Doug is holding notice, will be on. You notice I hold it like this. I'm not wearing it over my shoulder, because I'm not a fighter. So I gotta hold it like this, but uh, this, is, uh, this is a very significant belt. There it is, that's the Ring Magazine belt that will be on the line. The reason we're starting off with, with them is because on Saturday, Marlena Sparza and Naoka Fujioka from Japan will be fighting for the flyweight Ring Magazine belt, and it's the first time that belt is ever gonna be on the line, correct, Doug? Yes, for, for female flyweights. And the significance of this belt? Oh, it's real simple. I mean, that's the beauty of Ring Magazine, 100-year-old publication, by the way, and Bernard can tell you a little something about its history and what it means to, to fighters at the highest level. But it means that the, the matchup between Marlene Esparza and Naoka Fujioka is number one versus number two. That's what it means. It means the best against the best. The top two fighters in any weight class, when they fight, it's for the Ring Magazine title. Yeah, uh... Let me get that over to That's why I say, I say hashtag ring champ. It, it, it looks better over champ. here. Yeah. <laughs> I want everybody to know it looks better over here and it yeah, feels good Bernard. too. You, you've got a couple of but them. But yeah, I have, I've, I've, been, <laughs> I've been blessed through hard work and, and, and consistency. And the ring belt is to me, you know, to me and to most. Hold it up, Bernard. I'll, I'll hold this microphone yeah, for you. Yeah, that's, that, that'll help. But now, Doug wasn't going to do this. Right. And he's right, I'm going to do it. <laughs> uh, and I've done it for 28 years. Let me tell you, when you had the Ring Magazine belt, it's the signature that you are the king of that division. And, and let me tell you, and let me tell y'all something. When you had the Ring belt even go back as far as you can go back in time in boxing, and it's over a hundred years. There wasn't the WBC. It wasn't the WBA. It wasn't the IBF or the WBO. It was the Ring Magazine belt. You go all the way back to Jack Johnson. You go all the way back to the Marcianos and all the way up to now. I'm talking Rocky Marciano. You go all the way back to the Joe Frazier's, the great Muhammad Ali, the Marvin Hagler's. I can go on and on. Y'all know the fighters I'm talking about in the history. The Ring Magazine, 100 years, at this time that boxing and the world get a chance to see and celebrate the 100 years that Ring Magazine has been around, that's a long time for any major, major representative of boxing. And it needs to be recognized, and it will be through all the champions that had this belt. I have a few, of course, Oscar have more than a few, but he has them. And other fighters that's not here, they recognize it also. So to me, it's, it's a pride to have this belt and the fighters today, the present fighters today, they now have to reach the Ring Magazine belt in their careers. And that's when a tradition and a legacy of boxing in the Ring Magazine will live on for 100 more years. And that's what I know is gonna happen. Man, he can speak, right? Beautiful words, Bernard Hopkins. And that, 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 uh, that Ring Magazine belt will be on the line. You mentioned Kings. We're gonna have a queen crowned on Saturday in the 112 division. Doug Fisher, usually you're the one that's long-winded. Bernard shows up. Not in his presence. <laughs> there it is. Bernard, thank you so much. We appreciate yeah. it. Uh, you can have, I mean, where, where do you keep your belt at? I keep my belt in the trophy case. I keep all my belts. Um, at home, um, at a trophy, in a trophy case, looking um, awesome. out to, to, to everybody that can see it at, at my house and, and awesome. to come through. And to, to understand where, where, you know, that time and that work and how blessed I am to be able to look at 15, 16 belts. And, and four, of them, four of those are the, the ring. ring. And, that, and that's key. The ring belt is, is key. That's the signature of the boxing belts that exist in our world of boxing. Beautiful words right there. Doug Fisher, editor-in-chief of Ring Magazine, thank you so much. The executioner, the Hall of Famer, Bernard Hopkins. All right, thank you, gentlemen. Uh, I have a belt that's reversible, black and brown. It does everything, so we're good to go. <laughs> that's cool. <laughs>
<laughs> hey, you taught me about being practical. There you go. All right, thank you, gentlemen. We'll see you guys Saturday. Actually, tomorrow at the weigh-ins, we'll see you Saturday in the ring. See you Saturday. Somebody's going to be crowned the new Ring Magazine 112 female, female female champion yes. on Saturday. All right, round of applause for Bernard Hopkins. <laughs> Don't hit anybody over there, Bree Hopkins. A couple fighters are going to make weight tomorrow, all right? All right, now we're going to move on. The man who's going to be opening up the broadcast on the zone on Saturday from Armenia, now training in Southern California, Brickhouse Boxing, Azat Hovenisian to the stage. There he is, my man. Make a round of applause for Azat Hovenisian. He's 20 and 3, 16 KOs. All right, my friend, how are you doing? Good, good. I'm good. Uh, good. Remember a couple years ago when we used to have the LA Fight Club at the Belasco, you hated interviews? You hated talking to anybody? Yes. No yes. English? Or you pretend to like no English now? It, you're ready. A little bit, yes. Yeah. Yes. Saturday, you're going to fight on the zone. You said you want to get more exposure. You went and fought Ray Vargas for a title, came up short. At, you're going to be fighting at 122 pounds. Who do you want to fight? I'm, and say if everything goes right on Saturday, you're the mandatory. Who do you want to fight? Uh, this fight? Any, after. Uh, after. I fight anybody. So I, every time I say anybody, I'm ready for a fight. All right, so there's MJ out there, Ronnie Rios out yeah, there. Yeah, everybody. Yeah? yeah? You're very confident in yourself as a yeah. Yes. Your nickname, Crazy A. Why? Uh, my boxing style, maybe. <laughs> yeah, you, you get in there and you knock people out? Yeah. Is that what we're going to see on Saturday? Saturday. See you Saturday. It's a good fight. I'm ready for this fight. It's good calm. Everything is good. All right, Crazy A, Azad Hovenician. You'll see him nice. opening up the broadcast on Saturday. He's a mandatory for MJ and Ronnie Rios, the winner of that. You ready for them? Yeah, i ready. Anybody? <laughs> Every day ready. <laughs> Every day stays ready. All right. Yeah. Azad, thank you so much. We'll thank see you. you on Saturday. Stand up here for the pictures. Thank you, yes. Right there. Merci. Merci. Right there. Let me get out of your way, Azad. All right, so Azad's going to open up the broadcast on Saturday. Todd Grisham, Serge Amora, Chris Mannix on the broadcast on the zone. <laughs> Representing Armenia, now training in Southern California, Azad Hovenician. Thank you, Azad. All right, so you heard Bernard talking about the Ring Magazine belt. It's going to be history being made at 112 pounds for the first time. The belt is on the line, and you're going to see two fighters that are going to go after it. And this fight was actually made back in the summer. Uh, back in California on the Surdo Ramirez undercard, I was on the broadcast with Marlena Sparza. We were watching Fujioka play. We interviewed her. I mean, play, fight. I in we interviewed her, and I was like, hey, how about you two fight each other? As a joke. And Roberto Diaz made the fight. So we have him here. It, let's bring up to the stage now 2012 Olympian Marlene Esparza. <laughs> Representing. Houston, Texas, and bringing her WBC belt. There it is, Marlene, thank you so much. Her opponent from Japan, Naoko Fujioka. <laughs> Land of the Rising Sun. A five division world champion making her way. This will be a good scrap on Saturday. Marlene, we're gonna start with you. You've made lots of boxing history as an Olympian, now with the green belt on your shoulder. But fighting Saturday for the Ring Magazine belt, you heard Bernard talking about it. I've heard you talk about different interviews. How cool is that? You know, um, it's extremely cool. I'm so excited about it. I think, uh, you know, we're both champions. We also both want to be the best. But the Ring Magazine belt is definitely the way to solidify everything already for what it is. So, you know, it's a great honor, and I think we're both excited to get the opportunity to do so. And that'll be Saturday on the zone, Naoko. What do you know about Marlene Esparza, your opponent? Yes, of course. Uh, oh, hey, hey, yeah, I was going to say. Everybody bring a belt. There you go. <laughs> uh, she is an Olympic bronze medal winner. Uh, and she's a great fighter. And uh, she is a mother. Uh, she has uh, her my baby. Yeah. yeah, that's it. Yeah, so Naoko told me, I want to practice my English. I don't want a translator, so <laughs> I, she said I did my research, so respect to you coming out here. I, hopefully the translator still gets paid. They made the trip, but hey, we're there. It, but this is a fight, <laughs> too, Marlene, awesome. where you and I were doing that broadcast uh, this summer, and you looked at it, and you're like, when she beats Salem Rubina, you're like, I want this fight. Why did you want it? 
Definitely, because she's a seasoned fighter, and it, it showed. I fought Sulem as well, and I thought she beat Sulem. I th thought she beat Sulem well, but she did it in a different way than I did. Uh, we both had different strategies going in, and we both executed differently, and we both were successful, and I really thought that she'd be a great opponent. I don't want to fight people just because I know I can beat them. I want to fight people that are really going to push me to my limits, really take me somewhere I haven't been, and I definitely think she's a, an opponent for that. And we'll see that Saturday on the zone. You see a belt here, a belt there. You see the ring magazine belt that Bernard Hopkins is holding up. Naoka, a five division champion in Japan representing your country. You say you've been dyed your hair. It was red to represent Japan. Uh, why do you fight? Why do you love boxing? <laughs> Oh. I want to be, I want to prove myself as the best. Wants to prove yourself as the best. The mo you're motivated. Motivated. Um, people talk about the boxing. Uh, I want to show boxing matches and entertain people. There it is. Entertain people. We love <laughs> that. Arigato. All right, we'll see them Saturday. The Ring Magazine belt on the line. WBA, WBC belts on the line in the flyweight division. Naoko Fujioka, Marlene Esparza. Let's get you ladies up here to pose. Leave the microphone here. Houston, Texas. Japan. Round of applause for the ladies. We'll see them Saturday. They'll be the second fight on the zone. There it is. Marlene went from broadcasting the fight to fighting. There it is. <laughs> there it is. All right, face off now, ladies. 112 pounds on Saturday. WBA, WBC, ring magazine belt on the line, exclusively on the zone. All right, ladies, thank you so much. A lot of respect between the two, a five-division champion. Great job. Thank you so much. Great job. We'll see you Saturday. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Like she came up to me yesterday and said, I'm going to try my, my best in English and respect anybody who's willing to speak a different language, let alone in a press conference. All right. Now, this is a man you've seen many a times. Forget his record. You know that anytime he's in the ring, he's going to bring a scrap to you. He goes back and forth. He'll tooth and nail with you. Had a great knockout last year over Bekhtar Melikuziev, training with the legendary Freddie Roach in Hollywood at Wild Card, representing Philadelphia, representing Puerto Rico, King Gabe Rosado. There it is, coming through. You right here, man. All right, and representing Pomona, California, now living in Las Vegas, Shane Mosley Jr. <laughs> Clap for yourself, Shane. That's right. I mean, if you don't cheer for you, who will? There it is. What's happening, Gay? How you doing, brother? What's up, man? Good to see you. All right, this will be on Saturday on the Zone. You'll check that out. A fight that you know it's to know each other, right? You know, Gabe. A little side, side. A little side, right? <laughs> yeah. It's not, we're not going to talk about you knowing the dad. What do you know about Shane Jr.? Um, Come on, Gabe, you're a broadcaster, man. My bad. <laughs> you, know, um, you know, I thought, you know, his last fight, he looked good against Quigley. You know what I mean? I thought it was a fight. It could have went either way. Um, you know, and it's a fight that I'm excited about, uh, you know, being back at 68. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's just... Uh, for me, you know, Shane is just in the way right now for what I got to do and what I want to accomplish uh, this year in the 68th division. And Shane, for you, when they offered you this fight, I know you didn't hesitate, but this one also named you. Like, oh, I know this name. Yeah, of, of course. Um, it's not something I has, that, that I hesitated with. I, it was an immediate yes. And, um, you know, it's, it's like I, I look up to a guy like Gabe. Like, like he said, he's, he's striving right now with his record, like we talked about, he still wants to be world champion, and he's still capable of being world champion. I look up to that. I'm, 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 I'm as well, 17 and four as, as a professional. I want to be world champion. A guy that is still fighting to this day to be a world champion, I want to be a part of that. And uh, I just think it's a great fight, and 
why not be a part of that? There it is. The fans are definitely going to win in this one. Gabe, when people see your name get put on a belt sheet, they're like, it's never like, it used to be, oh, man, look at his record, blah, 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 blah. The last couple of years, it's been, oh, I want to see this dude. What, what's changed in your career that people are like, I want to see this guy win or lose because you bring that scrap? Yeah, you know, um, I think it's just, you know, the I don't, I don't quit. You know what I'm saying? I just keep going. You know, in boxing, they write you off quick with an L or whatever. But, you know, I'm, uh, I compare myself to the old school fighters, you know, the fighters that, yeah, they had losses, but they kept pushing. You know, when you look at Roberto Duran, you don't think about his losses. You think about how great he is. You know, when you think about Vander Holyfield, you think about his greatness. So, you know what I mean? An L to me is just, it's just a learning experience for me to keep pushing and uh, defeat the odds. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not in this, you know, obviously I make a living doing this, you know, but it's not just about that. You know what I mean? It's to, to prove to myself that I got what it takes to be a world champion. And there's nothing like the roar of the crowd when you walk in and the crowd's going crazy, that high, that adrenaline. You know what I mean? I live for that. So, um, you know, it's, I'm, I'm in this for the love of it. Yeah, and uh, for you, Shane, why does it feel like this could be the one that steals the night? It could be the fight of the night. It could steal the show. Um, because I think that you guys know that we're both going to give our all. And when that happens, greatness happens, right? So that's what we look for. That's what we want. And that's what people are expecting. So that's what I expect to do. I'm sure that's what he expects to do. And hopefully it's enough to, to be, be good. Put on a show Saturday night on the zone. Philadelphia, Pomona, Gabe Rosado against Shane Mosley Jr. Let's get the face off going for you two. On the stage here, on the stage. Now they know each other, or they used to. Now they're facing off. And look at the pose. Look right here, Tom Hogan right down the middle, the Yankees jersey. Make some noise for Gabe Rosado, Shane Mosley Jr. You'll see them live Saturday on The Zone. There you go, King Gabe, Shane Mosley Jr. All right, so, oh yeah, 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 feeling good, feeling good. Ryan Garcia is off to the side, moments away from him, but you know, you, you, we all know what's going on. Ryan went to a new trainer. Joe Goosen is his new trainer, and Joe Goosen, where you at, Joe? Do you have your denim on, or do you change it up? Let's bring up Joe Goosen, legendary trainer, to say, no denim. Joe, you're just. A, you're changing it up on me. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep them guessing. Keep them guessing. All right, all right. How you doing, Joe? Uh -huh. Hey, Beto. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I've seen you all week long. I saw you last week in San Diego. Yeah. And I've asked you this question, and every single time you give me the answer, it, it's you smile when you say this. I'm asked this. Joe, you don't work with many tri fighters. You don't leave your base in the Valley. No. Oh. You go to San Diego with Ryan Garcia. You pick up your own camp. Yeah. Why? Well, I'm happier than ever that I did that. And I, you know, I, I may be repeating myself, but just being down here in the back room with Oscar De La Hoya, being down here with uh, Bernard Hopkins, okay, two of the greatest of all time. And then intermingle with these two guys, two legends, uh, really brings home the fact that I made the right decision. Uh, because I'm in really good company right now. And Ryan, one day, will be in the same position that Oscar and Bernard are as uh, legendary fighters. And I'm excited, and I believe that I'm working one of the great fighters of today's era. So that's why I left Hearth and home, came here, spent two months in training camp. But you know, I, I'm very, it went by quickly, and to uh, tell you the truth, it got me into a little bit of shape. So I really? feel pretty good. Yeah, you know, of It's not hyperbole from you, Joe. It really, no. it really is uh, what you're saying you believe because yeah. working with Michael Nunn over the years, working with the Ruelas brothers, Chico, and the legends you worked with. Casamayor, it, Frank it, Lyles, it goes on Robert and on. Guerrero, yeah. And for you to say that it seems like you have an, like a rebirth, new energy yeah. from you, Joe. Yeah. No, I do. Um, you know, it, it's, it's uh, almost like a, you know, fantastical story, but 
It really is. It's um, something I jumped at. I, like I said, I was very comfortable in my surroundings at home. I have my own gym. Most of all the fighters come to my gym yeah. if they want to train. In fact, uh, unfortunately, I left a few boys behind, but I've got uh, a trusty associate that takes care of that. But this was, a, I think, a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for me. And um, I've always liked Ryan. I, look, he trained at my gym when he was 17 years old. I offered him a contract and a lot of money, and that's when he was saying, I have never done that before. So I, I saw... Wait, you wanted to manage him? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I got an investor within two days. I said, look, this kid's going to be the next Oscar De La Hoya. Really? That was when he was 17, and the guy took it, my word uh, at it and um, said, you got it. We, we lined up a lot of financial stuff for him. Now, unfortunately and fortunately, because it came full circle, he ended up with Oscar, and now I'm back with Ryan, albeit six, seven years later. And it's, it's kind of a crazy story, but... We always stayed in touch with each other. After Ryan's fights, he would give me a call or come by the gym. So he'd bring his uh, uh, brother with him, Sean. And uh, we always stayed in touch. And so it, it, it was an easy thing to do. It was an easy decision for me. And I'm, I'm really happy I did it. And Joe Goosen, yeah. trainer extraordinaire. Is this going the distance? Uh, yeah, I'm putting you on the th This interview? Well, yes, the interview is <laughs> going the distance. <laughs> The fight? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Joe Goose, appreciate Thanks, you. Thanks, Beto. Way, man. All right. Uh, All right. I love talking to Joe. I mean, I know we're doing a press conference. But let's just go to the TV show real quick. All right. Ryan Garcia, as you know, puts on a show wherever he goes. Yeah. And uh, one thing about him is Ryan Garcia, the cameras love him because he knocks yeah. people out. He yeah. puts it on. Let's check out this video of Ryan Garcia. Ryan Garcia, the group for greatness. Here goes the first. Oh. I stunned him. Garcia closing in now. Boom. That's all she wrote. Good night. But I'll tell you the story about this, okay? I'm Ryan Garcia, and this is the best 10 seconds of my career. Oscar. I'll set the scene. I, I'm in the locker room, and... I always play worship music and always talk to God before I step into the ring. I don't, I don't do anything else. As I was doing that, I felt an aura just come over my gloves and just a, just a feeling of knowing. You understand what I'm saying? A feeling that I knew I was gonna knock him out. And as I knew that, I was already praying for him to wake up because I didn't want him to, to be asleep forever. So I came out, I was feeling good in the ring. I shoot my shots, I'm landing them at ease. He's throwing punches that are out of range. I'm continuing the pressure without putting too much pressure to make it sloppy. And I didn't want him to be too worried. So immediately I went into a defensive position to try to invite him into a shot right here. He's throwing a shot that he knows he shouldn't throw. And for that split second, he's vulnerable to get knocked out because he won't see the shot coming. Now that I look back at it, it's like, I felt like I had like hours to hit him with that shot. As I'm looking at it now, right? It looks so like in an instant. But when I'm looking at him right here, I had about a second to land that left hook. I was like, oh wow, he's leaving his head there for that long. And I was like, all right, boom. When you know you knock somebody out, it's not because you hit him hard. It's more like you hit them and their body disappears. You know, look at me, look, I don't look strong because I'm not that tough guy, you know? I'm not the guy that, you know, is just looking mean, angry. But it's something inside me that has this fire. It's belief, it's this energy inside me that when I throw a shot, it comes all out. It only comes out when I'm throwing punches. I'm doing anything else, I don't got it. It went viral, it went, it went nuts. Everybody was talking about it. LeBron James, I mean, so many big celebrities, so much hype around it. I delivered an amazing knockout and that's the recipe for viralness. That's how the world repays you. <laughs> this kid is a superstar. I felt so great. I can't even explain that, that feeling I had inside me. King Ryan. King Ryan, King Ryan. 
that nickname just stick wild to me. When you're winning like that, you feel like you're royalty. Just like LeBron James, he's King James. He's king of the court. And I want to be king of the ring. And that was the best 10 seconds of my career. Yeah, that was a night to remember in Anaheim. Real cool uh, graphics animation. That was a cool video just to see it like that. Uh, now we are joined by the Golden Boy himself, the CEO and founder of Golden Boy Promotions, representing East LA, the Hall of Famer himself, Oscar De La Hoya. I mean, everybody's bringing a ring belt, okay. Uh, he said, stop it. So more noise for Oscar De La Hoya. <laughs> You're going to walk good, with a ring belt, you know. Ring belt, baby. How's that feel? Yeah, no, let me just say that I'm so proud that, uh, that Marlene uh, is, is fighting for this belt. Um, it means so much to women's boxing. And w what, what everybody has to know is that the ring magazine belt, like Bernard Hopkins said, you have to earn, you have to fight the, the best of the best. It's number one, number two, but most importantly, it's not driven by sanctioning fees. It's not where you have to pay for the belt or it, like, we actually make it and the fighter earns it because they're the top fighters in the world. Number one, number two, that's it. And the only way you can lose it is in the ring. The only way you can win it is in the ring, fighting the very best. So. This fight with Marlene and her opponent, it, it's going to be a great, great fight. But I'm just so proud that it's, uh, it's the first time ever that women's, women's boxing is fighting for the very best belt ever. Yeah. So that's, that's pretty cool. As far as the Fujioka, first time the flyweight ring magazine belt will be crowned. and There will be a new queen in the ring on Saturday exclusively on the zone. Now the main event, Ryan Garcia, seen back in the ring for the first time since right. January. It's like 15 months that we haven't seen him. You're back there talking. How's he feeling? No, he's feeling in good spirits. He's, uh, he's happy. He's uh, relaxed. Um, and I've always said this uh, in the past, that Joe Goosen was the perfect, perfect trainer for him. You know, just keeps everything calm. Um, he, knows, he knows what he has to do. Well, you know, you had him. As yeah, a Joe, Joe Goosen's a, a great, great trainer. He has a lot of knowledge. He's been training a lot of great champions, so uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to to, to seeing um, um, you know what Ryan uh, um, you know the new techniques and moves and this and that on Saturday night. So it's he's in tough with to go, but you know there's a lot of confidence out there uh, with Ryan. Yeah, you'll see him the main event. Ryan Garcia, Manuel Tigo from Ghana Saturday, the main event on the zone. Oscar though. San Antonio, I know you were looking around here like, hey, I know this place yeah. a little bit, right? What's this yeah. do for you, memories-wise? No, look, I mean, I've, I've always said, now as a promoter, you're not, you're, not a, you're not a fighter, you're not a champion, unless you fight in front of, uh, you know, the San Antonio crowd. So, I mean, I want to take, uh, take this opportunity and just thank, and thank the people here, uh, the fans here in San Antonio. Um, I remember I promoted uh, Canelo versus Trout here. Um, now uh, we're coming with, uh, with Ryan Garcia and to go. And, uh, and we're building young superstars here in the making, uh, local kids, uh, kids from Texas. So boxing is, is, is uh, supported uh, like no other place. Uh, here in Texas, so we, we greatly appreciate you guys. Yeah, and it's during Fiesta Week, so if you're trying to get a hotel room, good luck. I mean, way to plan it, Oscar. Good job for Carter Luska <laughs> now. Your director of travel had to get everybody everywhere. Right, right. <laughs> hey, but that's the whole point is you have Fiesta going on, you have Ryan Garcia Saturday night, the main event. What are we going to see from Ryan on Saturday, Oscar? Um, you have to wait and see. Who knows? I mean, that's why, that's why people love watching Ryan. I mean, look, everybody loves watching Ryan. That's, that's the bottom line. Because they love to watch him win and lose, right? Well, They're trying yeah, to root for I mean, him look, to lose, right? Uh, sure. I mean, just, just, like, just like the past greats that went before him, um, you know, people, people would root for the best, and, but they would be against the best. Yeah. So when you're special, you have, you have the best of both worlds. And, you know, there's, there's fans that want to see Ryan lose, and there's fans, more fans, that want to see Ryan win. But that's, that's because he's special. And, um, you know, 15-month layoff, 
I don't think it's going to affect him one bit. Um, he's always in the gym. He's always wanting to learn. He's, he's a disciplined fighter, a dedicated fighter. And, uh, you know, I'm sure he's very anxious to get in the ring on Saturday night. Yeah, live on the zone or worldwide, exclusively on the zone. Oscar, one thing that you and Eric Gomez, President Golden Boy, always talk about, Roberto Diaz, Rosalind, your matchmakers, is we're going to match our guys young, that are young. We're going to match them tough because we have to build champions here. There is no leeway, right? You have to get there and you have to fight people. That's the mantra of the company right now? Well, yeah. I mean, you, you have to earn it. That's, that's the bottom line. And um, I, I can see Ryan becoming world champion this year. Um, I can see him becoming world champion many times over. It's up to him in the ring, but uh, he has a great team behind him. And uh, now with the, uh, with the, uh, with the special add-on in Joe Goosen, I think sky's the limit. But look, first things first, uh, to go is uh, he, he came here to win. He came here, he's no pushover, he's uh, no walk in the park. Um, it's not gonna be an easy fight, but uh, look, I mean, that's, that's why you're in the, in the fight business, to prove that you can be up against the very best. He's top five in the world. Um, so we, uh, we, we feel it's going to be a great fight, and, uh, you know, we're hoping for the very best on Saturday night. There it is, Saturday night here inside the Alamo Dome. The Golden Boy himself, Oscar Deloy. Oscar, get up there. Take some pictures, man. Get, get up to the oh, there. You got the Ring Magazine belt. Uh, right. Why not? Let's go. Round of applause for Oscar Deloy. <laughs> yeah, that Ring melt just feels different, doesn't it? Yeah. Bernard got all... Oh, and it's free. All right, well, it's free. Give me three. All right, here we go. Now, that was cool to talk to Oscar, but one thing that Golden Boy and the zone and the boxing is really starting to build up is the fight calendar. Right now, let's look at what the zone has worked up for you. Action pack calendar coming your way. And after a couple of years of having no fans in the crowd, it's cool to have lots of fights for the fans here in Texas or wherever you may be around the world. You don't want to miss all the action only on the zone. And the zone social media crew is always giving you cool videos, cool content behind the scenes. Make sure you follow them. Make sure you follow the Golden Boy Instagram account and the social media accounts. They're giving you all kinds of cool videos for you. And good job, Sebastian. Good job, Luis, everybody else that are working behind the scenes. All right, now, let's go. Let's talk about the main event on Saturday. The reason we're here, right? On the zone, you're going to see this man representing Accra, Ghana, the Game Boy, Emmanuel Tego. There he is, feeling confident. Yeah. There you go, represent Emmanuel. You know, take off the jacket, show off the shirt pretty good. Big old chain and everything. My goodness. There you go. Man, you feeling good? More than good. You're more, more than good. All right. Yeah. And the man, he's going to be taking on the return to the ring. You see his face everywhere. And don't act like you don't follow him. The one, the only, Ryan Garcia. <laughs> I, earlier I said uh, noise for Bethel. <laughs> now noise for Ryan Garcia. There you go. There it is, Ryan. How you feeling, man? Great, great. Yeah? Ready to get going? Yes. Yeah, it's like, how many times can I ask you how do you feel, right? I know. You <laughs> ask me a lot. <laughs> but we haven't seen you since last January. How much are anticipation do you have for this fight? Where you just like, are you just itching to go? I mean, yeah, I'm ready to fight. It's what I've done my whole life. So uh, I'm excited to finally be back, and I'm ready to do this. All right, what happened yesterday at the media workout where he got in the ring for you? No, it's all good. It's all love. It's just we're going to fight. It's a fight, you know. Sometimes emotions are all up, and, you know, you uh, 
get a little ready to go. But at the end of the day, I got respect for him. He's a man. I'm a man, and we're going to do our thing in the ring come uh, Saturday night. Emmanuel, why would you go in the ring yesterday? You know, I want to show Ryan Garcia I'm more than ready. That's why the team happy yesterday. You're more than ready for Saturday. I'm more than ready. I can't wait for Saturday because I'm here to showcase myself. I'm here to prove anyone I'm the best. But I use Ryan Garcia to showcase myself to prove anyone say I'm the best. There you go. He's very confident, Emmanuel Tego. Now, I saw a video, uh, I think it's my boy Big from Barstool, the Barstool people, where you had one of their guys drink Ghana pepper. What does that mean? You keep talking about he's not ready for Ghana pepper. What's Ghana pepper? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That very day, I think everybody can see the Ghana pepper. Ryan Garcia, too, he see the Ghana pepper. Sometimes, you know, if you walk outside, you get fresh air, you talk anyhow, but if you enter the ring, you start feeling heat, now you see the pepper. I think that very night, everybody can see. Uh, you're gonna bring the heat, you're gonna bring the pressure for Ryan Garcia. You see, I know everybody talk about Ryan Garcia, it's good, me too, I respect Ryan Garcia a lot, but Saturday night, it feel very bad. Uh, I promise you, I promise anyone. Yeah, a couple weeks ago at the press conference in Los Angeles, out of respect, now that it's fight week, you, it feels talking a lot of trash now, Ryan. No, it's all good. Uh, all one good, thing to say about the, the Ghana pepper. I'm okay, he, I'm okay. He, he forgot that I'm Mexican. We got all the spice. I've been, I've been eating spicy stuff my whole life. So ain't no Ghana pepper going to do nothing to me. You know, I got jalapenos. We do that all day. Don't worry, no Ghana pepper here. Let's get it. Okay, I know. Talk. I know you. I'm Mexican, talk. man. That's what I'm saying. Okay, I know. Talk a lot. You are a Mexico. It's good, me too. Yeah. I'm the Ghanaian, but I love Mexicans. The same thing, I love you. But if I enter the ring, I, love you I don't more. spare you. <laughs> All right. Joe Goosen, the new trainer. Well, how was that camp? It's amazing. Joe Goosen is a. You know, he got that special sauce, to him, something about him, right? More jalapenos? <laughs> no, <laughs> he's everything. So uh, we, we built a g great connection, and I couldn't be happier of the team that's uh, surrounding me. Uh, I love my team, and I wanted to thank all of them for doing a great job this camp. I wanted to thank God uh, above all. Above all, I wanted to thank God. So, uh, yeah, I'm building a strong foundation. I'm happy where I'm at right now, and we're going to put on a great performance. Saturday night, live on the zone, Ryan Garcia against Emmanuel Otego. Emmanuel. You mentioned fighters from Ghana, Azuma Nelson, Claudia, just legends that come out of there. This is your biggest fight of your career. How excited are you for to put on a show? Yeah, yeah, I think I'm very, very happy with this fight because I know I'm fight big, big fight, but this one is special for me. That's why if you see my training camp, I think I have massive uh, management, I have massive training camp for this fight because I come here to prove myself with this fight. I know everybody can appreciate because I want to thank my team and my management team and my coach and my gym mates and my sparring partners. I hope every do, do great to me. Every, every my gym mate push me well, my coach push me well, my management push me well. Everybody push me well, I appreciate that. I hope Saturday night I got glory to them. Emmanuel Tego, we'll see him Saturday the main event. Ryan, last one for you. Everybody wants to come after you, right? Everybody is going to either try to make a name for themselves, try to make some money off of you. You know that everybody's gunning for you. How do you stay locked in on your fight? I make sure I train as hard as I can. I, I make sure that uh, I don't, you know, lie to myself when I'm training. So I understand the the type of things people are going to bring when they fight me because they know the opportunity they have. You know, they know if they beat me, they have a big name in boxing automatically. So uh, I don't take anybody lightly. That's why I expect him to be the best he could be when he steps into that ring. But just know that he'll figure out that I'm different in there. All right, Saturday night live on the zone. Ryan Garcia, Emmanuel Tego, let's get a face off here. Roswell, get up here, aren't they? Oscar, Bernard, let's go up here, gentlemen. You can leave the microphone there, up there on the stage, Ryan, Emmanuel. Tickets available at Ticketmaster.com. Fight exclusively on the zone on Saturday from San Antonio, Texas.
Make some noise over there if you're here for Ryan Garcia. Emmanuel Tego, and if you're in San Antonio, the way in tomorrow here at the Alamo Dome is open to the public. So, and it's free. That's probably gonna be the only thing you're gonna free during Fiesta Week. Uh, so you go here, you check it out. Face off between these two. Ryan Garcia, Emmanuel Tego. All right, respect between the two. The undercards on Saturday get going. Myself with, jo with a champion, Joshua Franco, will be on the broadcast. All right, thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Emmanuel. Thank you, Oscar, for hitting me in the panza. We'll be all right, man. All right, so for everybody involved, once again, Saturday night on the zone, Todd Grisham, Serge Amora, Chris Mannix on the broadcast. The undercards get going with myself and the champ, Joshua Franco, on Golden Boy YouTube's page. So everything that's going at 1 o'clock Pacific, 4 o'clock Eastern, the WBA Super Flyweight Champion, Franco, will be on the call. And then at 6 o'clock Pacific, 9 o'clock Eastern, 8 o'clock here in San Antonio, the DAZN broadcast. As always, make sure you follow the DAZN social media pages, the Golden Boy social media pages, for more exclusive behind-the-scene coverage from today. We'll see you tomorrow. The weigh-in is going to be live streamed for you around the world. Make sure you check in. So for everybody involved behind the broadcast, I'm Beth Duran. Thank you. We'll see you tomorrow for the weigh-in for Garcia Tego. for us regular humans who've never done that. Can you describe it? Ryan Garcia making his way in. The flash, you know the hand speed.